Welcome back, folks, to this week's random video blog, and as subscribed to my Twitter and Facebook pages down in the links below. Um, I finally got a new webcam this past week after years and years of using my shitty ass webcam for my laptop. Finally invested in a new one, which I'll be using for all the video blogs on Facebook and here on the YouTube channel going forward, so hopefully you enjoy that. Uh, but that being said, though, since it has been five years to this very month, that WWE's version of ECW Extreme Championship Wrestling, which I'm sure it didn't stand for in its final years, uh, since it's been five years since that promotion or brand closed, I figured I would dedicate today's video blog to ECW, WWE's version. And that, was it really that bad? Was it really as bad as some people... Uh, you know, perceive it to be or look back on it as. And of course, it was not the original ECW. And some people will look at the title of this video and say, it really was that bad, or, you're, or you'll listen to the entire video, um, hear me make my case for why it really wasn't that bad. And you'll still say that it was terrible, which is fine. I mean, you can you can think what you want, that is completely okay, and it was pretty bad. But um, I do want to make this video in making a case for why it did have its benefits. It had its, you know, it had its pros, and there was some positives about the ECW brand in its final years. So, of course, right off the bat, let me say I do agree that when ECW abandoned all extreme aspects of that show, and when it truly died is really all up for debate. I've seen some people say it died when um, Big Show won the ECW championship after Rob Van Dam got suspended only a month after the show opened, um, after only uh, one month after ECW was resurrected as its own show in July of 2006. I've seen some people say that ECW died with the December to December pay-per-view, um, widely known as one of the most, uh, one of the worst pay-per-views that WWE has ever done in, in their entire history. I think one of the worst buy rates, too, with the exception of some recent pay-per-views, but that's what the network So With the exception of those shows, I think December to December was like the worst buy rate that WWE has ever done. Um, some people will say that ECW died when Mr. McMahon won the ECW championship in the spring of 2007 during his feud with Bobby Lashley. There were a lot of points when ECW truly died. But uh, that said, though, in its final years, after they took away all the ECW aspects, and you knew it was doomed it was doomed to fail from the start, um, and you know that the only reason why they brought it back was because the chants were getting so loud at Raw and SmackDown shows, the DVDs were really selling well, so they kind of had to bring it back after the One Night Stand pay-per-view specifically in 05 and 06, respectively, did so well on their own. That they thought, hey, we might as well bring it back as a third show. But that's exactly what it was from the start. It was perceived not as its own, not as its own brand, but rather as the C show behind Raw and SmackDown, which is what NXT for the longest time was before it ended up getting replaced by what it is now as the developmental territory, whatever. But that's why NXT. ECW, Superstars, Main Event have never really amounted to anything because they've always been looked at as the C show. NXT now is not a C show, if it's anything but. If anything, it's the A show, if you ask a lot of people, myself included. That being said, though, it's you know perceived, it's looked at as its own brand because it has nothing to do with the other two shows. ECW, that was one of the major issues with it when they first resurrected it back in 2006. They had SmackDown people on their show, they had Raw people on their show, they did the trades, and they had like in one main event, I remember, I don't remember watching, but I, I think I did watch it actually, but I do remember reading up on it and stuff like that. I think it was one main event from I think late of 2006, it was like Batista versus The Big Show, and it was like one of the worst main events in ECW history when they brought it back, and the people completely uh, chanted their heads off during that matchup. It was like what we see today with like the Daniel Bryan chants and the booing for Roman Reigns, and you, that was like the, the ECW crowds like originated that uh, with the original ECW back in the late 90s and early 2000s. But even with the new ECW, that crowd kind of carried along to those shows, and they shit all over that matchup. It was hysterical, and rightfully so. That matchup was no good, and it had no place on the ECW show. So after 2007, they absolutely, I mean, I, ha I make no bones about it, that they should have scrapped the initials. It was no longer Extreme Championship Wrestling, and they didn't, you know, they should have completely separated themselves from what the original ECW was, and not watered down um, the memory, kind of, you know, bring it down from what it originally was, what people remember it as. And I don't think it ruined the legacy of ECW. Um, I mean, I think a lot of people just knew it was a joke in its final years. That said, though, um, they could have done a lot to really kind of get away from that image. And some people will claim that the only reason why Vince 
you know, brought back ECW is because he can make it into his own. Because, I mean, Vince is not not really a fan. From what I assume, and from what I have seen anyway, he is not really a fan of things that he does not create himself. And he tries to hold those people down, hold those things down, like the Ryder Revolution or Gang of Ryan or CM Punk, whatever. Those were not his creations. That said, um, he brought back ECW only to build it up and then to knock it right back down and make it into what he wanted people to see it as, as a shitty show. Uh, whether that's true or not, we'll never really know. But now that my bashing of the new ECW, the WWE ECW, is done, let me make a case for why it really wasn't that bad. Of course it was in like 06, 07 when they tried to tie in like the sci-fi aspects by bringing in the zombie, rest in peace, like literally because I think he actually passed away, Tim Arson, um, a couple months ago. So uh, my condolences go to his friends and family. But they, tie, they tried to tie in all these stupid Halloween-like aspects because it was on sci-fi, which was never really the most suitable network for ECW to begin with. I digress, but um, after that all bullshit was out of the way, and it did become the C show of the WWE, and it was pretty much just Raw and SmackDown Lite, that show from 2008 to 2010, and I'm not just saying that because I started watching in 2008, I mean just going back and there really weren't that many great wrestling matches, even back in 07, they still had the ECW originals, guys like Balls Mahoney were still around, Big Daddy V, The Boogeyman, they didn't have many great matches, the only great series of matches that I can remember from 2007 featuring ECW were the ones with Miz and Mor or with uh, Morrison and CM Punk over the ECW title. Specifically, their last encounter on that one episode of ECW in September of 2007 in the 15 Minutes of Fame match where Punk finally won that belt after Morrison got suspended due to the wellness policy, whatever. Um, that said, though, they could have done a lot after that to really kind of enhance the wrestling and kind of make that the core aspect of that show. And they really did that, in my personal opinion, from 2008 to until it closed in 2010 by bringing in people that could go. Um, Matt Hardy, you know, when they drafted him to the ECW brand. And at one point, they had the ECW Championship, the United States Championship, and the tag team titles on that show with... Um, since we had that talent exchange between uh, between ECW and SmackDown, you could get those champions on that show. So it wasn't like the worst thing in the world, but guys like Matt Hardy, CM Punk, Christian in its final year really brought ECW back to prominence. Not what it originally was by incorporating the extreme hardcore aspects and stuff like that. Like they would have um, the extreme rules matches and whatever. Like you go back to One Night Stand. 2009, I think it was, which was not a bad match. They also had an Extreme Rules match between Christian and Tommy Dreamer on an episode of ECW. It was a good match, but it was by no means what the original ECW was all about. And maybe this is just me speaking, um, but I was not a huge fan of hardcore wrestling. Like I went back and watched the first ever ECW pay per view available on the WWE Network. I think it was barely legal to uh, 1997. It was a good show, um, but if you like hardcore wrestling, like if you like like lots of blood and stuff like that, then you'll love that show. I'm personally not a fan of that. I'm a fan of the storytelling and the wrestling. And there wasn't a lot of that in the ECW's final years. But there were a lot of good things about it from 08 to 2010, like the people, like I mentioned, Christian, Punk, uh, Matt Hardy, who put on a lot of great ECW title matches, including, I was trying to make a list a couple days ago of like the best ECW title matches in WWE history. Um, there was the one at Unforgiven. I know the scramble match is like looked upon as like a complete failure, but the ECW title match that year at Unforgiven 2008 was actually a pretty good match. It kicked off the show on a high note. We had that. All the matches with Christian that I just mentioned, he gave Ezekiel Jackson, now known as Big Rick and Lucha Underground, the best match of his WWE career at the Royal Rumble 2010. We had those great series of matches with Christian and Regal, Christian and Swagger, Christian and Yoshitatsu even, who was like nothing after he left ECW, Christian and Zack Ryder, and ECW is really where Zack Ryder for, kind of came to prominence when he first got started, because of course when he first got started in WWE, he was paired with Kurt Hawkins, he was an edgehead, he was really overshadowed, and I'm not at all saying that Zack Ryder could have been or will ever be a world champion in WWE, but um, he could have been a suitable ECW champion if Christian kind of didn't kind of take that position. In, in its final year there. I think he could have been an ECW champion at some point. But um, it was on ECW that, that Zack Ryder really showed what he was all about and that he was capable of you know, hanging with that top-tier talent in guys like Goldust with Christian. They had an awesome ECW title match. I think it might have been September of 09 on an episode of ECW. I can't remember the exact date, but it was awesome. Between Christian and Zack Ryder, that was 
so to speak, for lack of a better term, Zack Ryder's coming out party on that show, um, kind of showing what he was all about, that he could really hang with guys like Christian in, in uh, high-caliber matches, whatever you want to call those ECW title matches, whatever. But um, still, though, we got guys like Zack Ryder from that show. Sheamus, of course, debuted on ECW in the summer of 2009, going on to later that year become the uh, one of the youngest, and uh, not one of the youngest, but one of the fastest rising WWE champions in history. Um, CM Punk, like I mentioned before, made his debut on ECW in um, the summer of 2006. Had a couple good feuds there for the two years that he was on ECW with guys like, like I said before, John Morrison, Chavo Guerrero, Miz and Morrison, a lot of people in the two years that he was there for. But I think ECW... Instead of being looked upon as a failure, which it was, but if you want to take away the positives from it, which I always try to do, is that those final two years from 08 to 2010 had a lot of great wrestling. And it sucks because you can't really go back and watch it. None of it is available on the network as of right now, as far as I know, um, except for the stuff that you see on like the pay-per-views. Like I said before, Unforgiven 08, Royal Rumble 2010, and that awesome ECW title match between Ezekiel Jackson and Christian, if you want to check that out. Um, Christian and Swagger had a couple good matches in early 2009, so you can go back and watch those various pay-per-views and see the ECW title matches, and it was never going to be uh, beyond a certain level, it was always that C show, but it was a nice little platform for people to kind of go, and guys like Christian, who did deserve to be on Raw and SmackDown and headlining and be in a better position what they were, but it was a good starting point for the up-and-comers, guys like Sheamus, guys like Jack Swagger, guys like Zack Ryder, and also a good place for like the veterans to kind of hone their craft and put over the young guys and kind of mix it up with those guys and give them a nice rub before they went on to Raw and SmackDown. Guys like Christian, guys like Matt Hardy, guys like Finley and Mark Henry and Tommy Dreamer even, who was there until almost the very end um, before retiring on the ECW brand, I think in December of 2009. That said, um, still, I think ECW, you'll never really know because, like I said, none of it is available on the WWE Network except for the pay-per-view matches, but... There's a lot of people that, uh, that there's a lot of things about that show that people tend to overlook, like the great wrestling and what it did to the careers for guys like the for the aforementioned guys that I that I talked about before, um, and, and what they did, what it did for their careers and their great wrestling matches they were able to put on. But in the in the hall though, it was ECW was a giant failure. Um, they should never have brought it back to begin with, and I completely understand that. But was it really that bad? In my personal opinion, it wasn't. Because there was, it, it's not like it was a shitty ass wrestling show like in NXT, which they, you know, they, they scrapped ECW for to bring in NXT in, in February of 2010, which I'll talk about in next week's video blog. But when they had brought in NXT, and I understand the whole competition part about it, but the wrestling sucked because they didn't give they didn't give the guys any time. There was no character development. There was none of that. At least ECW before it went down had some really good wrestling with the guys that I mentioned before. So go back in the WWE Network, check out those matches, see for yourself. If you still don't believe me that ECW was really not that bad, it's completely okay. If you want to think it's, it was complete shit and there was not one good thing about it, that's fine. But I'm telling you, from my personal opinion, it really wasn't that bad in that there was some great wrestling. There were some saving graces, so to speak, of that show. That said, though, guys, I always appreciate you guys watching the video blogs. It means a lot to me. Make sure to continue to show your support with the likes, the comments, subscribe, share. Um, always means a lot, like I said before. And uh, here, always, here's hoping we can continue to produce videos like this with a new webcam going forward. So I'm very happy that finally came in the mail this past week. So I look forward to using that in future video blogs. So make sure to follow me on Twitter at WrestleRant. Find me on Facebook at Graham Jason Matthews. Link is down below. Like I said before, make sure to subscribe as well. Find my work on What Culture, Bleach Report, and everything else. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you guys down the road.